here it is. Apple just released it. It's a 16 inch MacBook Pro. No big keynote, no Phil Schiller bestriding the stage like the Colossus of computers that he is. Nope, just ta-da. It's a new MacBook Pro with a 16 inch screen. And actually it is designed to replace the old 15 inch MacBook Pro. This is just now discontinued. We've only got the 16 inch. And there have been a lot of complaints about this 15 inch MacBook Pro and Apple I think tried to address a bunch of them, but not quite all of them. The goal, I think, was to bring back the magic of this guy, the old MacBook Pro, the one that everybody likes, the last one that everybody likes, actually. So what did Apple do to change the new 16-inch MacBook Pro? Well, the first thing they did, the most important thing that they did, is they updated the keyboard, actually kind of went backwards. It is a scissor switch keyboard. It isn't butterfly, it's way quieter. It's got more key travel. It's one millimeter of key travel. Apple calls it a magic keyboard because it pulled from the Bluetooth magic keyboard, but whatever, it's a traditional keyboard. It has a little bit more of a, a thunk and a clunk than a spring and a snap, but at least it's not tick, tick, ticky like the butterfly keyboards are. The other great thing about this keyboard, real genuine physical escape key and inverted T arrow keys, which are way, way easier to hit. Now there is a little bit more space between the keys. That's because the keycaps are just a little bit smaller. Apple also says that the keycaps are a little bit stabler, which I don't know, whatever. Um, there's also a little bit more space between the keys and the touch bar, which is still here and it's still fine. The other really, really important thing that Apple changed on the 16 inch MacBook Pro compared to the last generation 15 inch is the thermals on the inside. So the heat sink on the processor is 30 something percent bigger. The fans have changed so they can blow 28% more air. They've even moved some stuff around on the logic board to help with, you know, getting the thermals out, getting the heat out of this thing. Apple says that all of those changes means that they can run the processor with 12 more watts of power at heavy loads than they could on the last generation. And that's a big, big deal because there are lots of problems with thermal throttling on the last generation MacBook Pro. You could put it in a freezer and it would work better. And hopefully this won't require that. Obviously we haven't had a chance to fully test it because I've only had this thing for half a day so far, but we're gonna give that a look during the full review. So those are the two most important things that Apple just had to fix on this MacBook Pro. So I want to get them out of the way right away, but we should talk specs. So there's a couple of configurations uh, that are available at the base and you can spec it all the way up. So let's talk about them. There is a six core Core i7 Intel processor or a eight core Core i9. And these are ninth generation Intel processors because 10th generation isn't available for the wattage that you want on these machines anyway. They start at 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM, but you can spec it all the way up to 64 gigs of RAM. It also starts at 512 gigs of SSD storage. You can spec that up to eight terabytes of storage, which it, the thing would probably cost like $10,000, who knows? But if you need all that power and all that storage, you can go get it on this thing. As far as graphics, Apple is staying with what it knows. You can get a Radeon 5300 or a Radeon 5500, sure. In terms of battery, there's a 100 watt hour battery, which is exactly the limit that the FAA allows for regular people like us to take on a laptop on a plane. And so that's what Apple put in this thing. And that battery means that this thing weighs 4.3 pounds, which is a little bit heavier. It also means that it's 0.7 millimeters thicker than the last generation. But you know what? I'm fine with that. This is the powerhouse MacBook Pro. It should be allowed to be just a little bit thicker to get you the better thermals, get you the better battery life. Apple says that it should last about an hour longer than the last generation MacBook Pro, but obviously we're gonna have to test that. All right, the screen. We should probably talk about the 16 inch screen on the 16 inch MacBook Pro. So it's a 3072 by 1920 screen. It gets up to 500 nits of brightness and it has a P3 wide color gamut. It looks pretty great to me. The bezels are a little bit slimmer on the left and the right and the top and the bottom but not by that much, you can still see the bezels. And the webcam at the top, by the way, is still like the same old webcam. They didn't really improve that that much. I think the screen looks great. I think Mac screens always look pretty great and I don't think this is gonna be any exception. The last thing that I wanna talk about, and I did not expect that I would be talking about this, is the quality of the sound coming out of these speakers. It is incredibly good. Apple says that it's a six speaker array. It says that there's woofers, two on each side, that actually cancel out each other's vibrations so that the thing can get an octave lower, give you better bass without you know rattling the keyboard or whatever. And 
just in a couple of songs that I've listened to, it seems really good. So I'm really excited to listen to more music on this thing and see just how good it is. Apple also says that there is a three mic array that is studio quality and that it could live up to say a Bluetooth microphone for podcasting. I don't know about that, but uh, we're definitely gonna test that out too. All right, so that's the main stuff that you need to know about the brand new 16 inch MacBook Pro. You could go out and order it right now if you wanted to, but you shouldn't, you should wait for reviews. We've only had this thing for a little while. So for example, we've run a couple of video export tests compared to last year's model, and it seems maybe just a little bit faster, a little bit less thermally throttled, but we need to do more testing to know for sure. My hope is that it could maybe live up to the last MacBook Pro that everybody loved, the old 2015 MacBook Pro 15 inch with all the ports. This doesn't have all the ports. It's got four Thunderbolt and a headphone jack. Hooray, headphone jack. But it could bring us back to loving our Macs again. We'll see in the full review. And I wanna know what you wanna know about the 16 inch MacBook Pro, because that's how I wanna run the review. So let me know down in the comments and uh, we'll see you next week.